Okay, so the next topic I want to talk about is equivalence relations. And we have several proofs in a row that deal with uh, equivalence relations. So first let's look at the definition. Definition 129 says, uh, so given two sets, uh, then a relation from set X to set Y is a subset of the product of the two sets and a relation on a, on a single set is a subset of the product of that set with itself. And recall um, we defined F as a subset of X cross Y. So a function is a relation from x to y with restrictions. Right, so a function isn't just any arbitrary set of the product of two, subset of the product of two sets. It's a subset of the product that has particular characteristics and essentially we require that it pass the vertical line test, right? If you have two ordered pairs in your function uh, such that the second coordinates differ, the first coordinates have to differ. Well, that's not the only possible relation between two sets or the only possible type of relation. Notice that we could have put different requirements on our relation than the ones that we had. And that's sort of why I wanted you to think of functions as being sets. So let's consider another relation. And um, we'll just call this one tilde. Um, on A, and we'll make A a very simple set. Let's go one, two, three, four, five. Defined by Um, tilde equal to, well, let's just do a bunch of ordered pairs. 1 comma 1, um, 2 comma 3, 2 comma 5, 3 comma 5, 4 comma 1, 4 comma 3, 4 comma 4, um, 5 comma 2, 5 comma 3, and 5 comma 5. So that's certainly a subset of A cross A, right? This is certainly a subset of A cross A. It's ordered, these are ordered pairs where the first element comes from A and the second co element comes from A. Now, how do we read these? Well, each ordered pair gives us a relation. So, another way to read this is 1 is related to 1. 2 is related to 3. 2 is also related to 5. 3 is related to 5. 4 is related to 1. 4 is related to 3. 4 is related to 4, 5 is related to 2, 5 is related to 3, and 5 is related to 5. So this gives us a relation on this set. And in fact, any subset of the product gives you a relation. Now, generally speaking, we only want to consider relations that have specific properties. So, a really big idea in mathematics is that of an equivalence relation. And let me uh, quickly insert the definition here of equivalence relation. 
So an equivalence relation is a relation, first of all, that meets certain conditions. So it's a subset of the product. And um, for all x in S, for all x in your subset of the product, each element has to be related to itself. This is called reflexivity. And then for all pairs in S, if x is related to y, then y has to be related to x. That's called symmetry, or symmetric. And for all x, y, and z in your relation, if x is related to y and y is related to z, then x is related to z. This is called transitivity. So let's just really quickly go up to the relation that we already have defined and see if it's an equivalence relation. Well, let's look at the first characteristic of an equivalence relation. Each element has to be related to itself. Well, we do have one related to one, and we have four related to four, and five related to five. But we don't have two related to two, three related to three. So this is not an equivalence relation. But just for fun, let's go ahead and check the other properties as well. So, um, uh, so let me just write here needs two related to two and three related to three. In other words, you'd have to throw the ordered pair two, two, and three, three in here at the very least to make this an equivalence relation. Now let's look at symmetry. It says if x is related to y, then y is related to x. In other words, each ordered pair has to have its reverse. So 2 is related to 3 from here, but is 3 related to 2? No, it's not. So it's not symmetric. We can check others. 2 is also related to 5, and 5 is related to 2. So it, there are elements of symmetry, but it has to be true for all x related to y. So we'd have to add elements in here to make it a, an equivalence relation. And finally, this uh, uh, the last one, transitivity, says if x is related to y and y is related to z, then x has to be related to z. So let's see. We have 2 related to 3 here. We have 3 related to 5. Now we need 5 related to 2. Oh, we've got that. So we've got transitivity so far, but it has to hold in every case. Um, let's see. 2 related to 5. 5 related to 3. Um, is 2 related to 3? Yes. Um, let's see what else we can check, and so on. You'd have to check. 4 is related to 3. Um, 3 is related to 5. Is 4 related to 5? Oh, no, it's not. We need 4 related to 5 for it to be transitive. So it's not transitive. So this is not reflexive. Not symmetric. And not transitive. So in my next video, I'll give an example where we get an honest-to-goodness equivalence relation and a way of looking at um, relations uh, with graphs.